Are you tired of your old wireless mouse pad losing connection, not fitting in with the crowd, and just generally not keeping up with the latest trends? Well, let's look at the Corsair MM800 Polaris RGB mouse pad. Boy, is that a mouthful. <laughs> it's a 13.8 inch by 10.2 inch low friction hard mouse pad with 15 lighting areas split between three sides. And then there's this tumor-like obstruction at the top that has a USB pass-through. It's got a non-slip base for when you get particularly excited over something. The attached cable is braided at approximately six feet long. And lastly, its fancy functions are controlled through the Corsair Utility Engine, so you can synchronize your RGB Corsair components for that rave your fingers always ask you for. There's a party in my hands and you're invited. Wait, that's not how that goes. Moving on, this is Q2. It's still in beta, so some bits are about as incomplete and disappointing as my physics exam grades in college, but such is life. Normally, I wouldn't recommend using this until Corsair gets their act together with their software, but OGQ does not support this device yet, so don't hold your breath. You can select individual color zones indicated by the white dividing lines here, or you can click and drag to select multiple areas. You can even add more layers to combine lighting effects. Default profiles and rearranging layer orders are not supported in Q2 at the time of making this video, but I suspect this functionality will be added eventually. So very briefly going through our lighting options, we have the Sparrow Rainbow, which has speed and direction controls. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Next up, we have the Rainbow Wave with the same speed controls and directions going up, right, down, or left. Not necessarily in that order. Next up, we have the Visor Effect, which is pretty neat. You can do random colors or you can alternate between two. Moving on, we have the Color Shift, which is fairly self-explanatory. Also random colors or alternating between two separate ones. And then after that, we have the Color Pulse. Same options here. Next up, we have the Color Wave, which is pretty much the same options, except we have direction back here again. And here we've got the static color option, which pretty much is as it sounds. You can select individual lighting zones or multiple ones by holding down control as you click. If you want to add more colors into the mix, you have to add a separate layer and then repeat the process over again. The final thing to demo on this list is Lighting Link, which pretty much links up all your peripherals to synchronize lighting effects. You've got a spiral rainbow effect, which allows for speed and direction control. Then there's the rainbow wave with the same options. You've got the visor, which I think looks pretty neat. Next up, we have rain, which also looks kind of cool. And the fairly self-explanatory color shift. Next, you have color pulse. And then a color wave. And then lastly, we've got type lighting, which is probably the most exciting and also most distracting of them all. Gimmicky and tacky lighting effects aside, what are the benefits of using a hard mouse pad? Less friction. Everybody knows that too much friction is uncomfortable and leads to chafing. Don't worry though, foreplay is not a prerequisite here. Jokes aside, it basically makes the mouse feel a little bit lighter compared to playing on a cloth surface because you have lower static and kinetic friction coefficients to overcome as you do your thing. Though you may need to surface tune your mouse a little bit if you notice it skipping a beat or two. That being said, a hard surface might not be for everyone. Some people like it better flaccid, I think. Some people like greater friction when they play with themselves. Sometimes more resistance is better. I sincerely mean all of that, it just keeps coming out wrong. I feel like all the things I like about this product came out in an unintentionally erotic way, so we'll just call that done and dusted. Now for all the things I don't like, Q2 is still limited. You can't set a default lighting profile to the mouse pad, so it always starts in this kind of rainbow effect, but that's not really that big of a deal. The problem is you can't combine certain effects. For example, you can't synchronize the mouse pad and the keyboard without sacrificing general backlighting. I noticed that having the slow wave effect isn't particularly smooth, and the colors don't appear to match Corsair's K70 rapid fire keyboard as accurately as I would expect, even if I'm using the same color values. Or maybe my eyes are just broken. The section at the top of the mouse pad has a glossy finish, but this is more of a note than an issue. Glossy surfaces tend to attract fingerprints just about as effectively as I repel women. But then again, that surface is up in a spot that almost never gets touched anyway. Kind of like me to women. Ha. And then there's the sound of your little mouse scuttling along the surface. This is pretty apparent with any hard mouse pad though, so that's something you'll have to live with if you prefer this kind of mobility. Last thing to mention, and probably the most obvious of them all, there is a cable. If you don't mind the cable, good for you. If you like keeping things as simple as you can on your desk, this is just another bit of clutter to add to your zip tie graveyard. And then there's this gargantuan devil tumor at the top. Yes, it needs to be this size to accommodate the USB pass-through, but I feel like putting it almost anywhere else would have been a better idea, because it keeps catching my mouse, like a trap. It's a mouse trap. Three remedies for this. Reorient your mouse pad, get a mouse bungee, or get a wireless mouse, all of which are stupid compromises. Last thing to talk about is the pricing. It's on Corsair's website for 60 US dollars, which is a little steep, I'll admit, 
but its only other competitor for peripherals in the RGB mousepad category is the Razer Firefly, which comes in at $10 cheaper, but also has less lighting customizability and isn't quite as vibrant. That being said, pick your poison. Or, or don't. You could just stick with the cloth pad or get a normal non-RGB mouse pad, but, but RGB. And that's all I have to say about that. If you liked this video or if it helped you in any way, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up to let me know I'm doing something right. If not though, go ahead and toss me a thumbs down because I probably deserve it. It won't hurt my feelings, I promise. If you have any questions or comments or concerns that I failed to address in the video, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below and I will get to you as soon as I can. The holidays are coming up, so go ahead and feel free to share this video around to anybody who may or may not benefit from it. Thank you for watching. My name is Steven and I'm a little dim. Bye bye. Is that outro like really corny? Cause it feels kind of corny. I don't know if I'm going to stick with that yet. Eh. We'll see. We'll see. Less friction. Maybe those too enthusiastic. Jokes aside, it basically makes the mouse feel a little bit lighter than compared to playing on a cloth surface because you have lower static and kinetic friction coefficients, and I just did a weird twitch with my eye, I think. I hope the camera didn't- oh, too late now, what the f*** does it matter? Some people like greater friction- friction- fixture- fic- f f friction. Friction. I feel like all the things I like about this product- 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 Products. Products. <laughs> I'm not good at this. If you have any questions or comments or concerns that I failed to address in the video, leave them in the description. No, that's my job. I do the description, you do the comments. So, that's all I got. Thank you for watching. I'm, I, 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 I was doing so well.